Dimitri, hello. Good afternoon. As is tradition, I must ask you. The conversation will be recorded and published. Look, I can be punished for this. Nothing terrible will happen to you, no one has ever been punished. You'll be fine. Okay, but I don't have to answer some of your questions. I'm interested in having you tell me something. You can introduce yourself, please. Introduce yourself, please. My name is Pyotr Ryatsev. Petr Ryatsev, when were you exchanged? I'll tell you now. In October. October. Were you exchanged in October? Tell me, with what request did you come to me? The thing is I wanted to ask you for help, so that you could help me somehow transfer money to Ukraine, as a thank you for Mrs. Oksana, who works as a medic in Ukraine. She helps our guys, the soldiers of the Russian army who are in Ukrainian captivity, to get back on their feet. Yes, at the same time you promised to tell something interesting that you did not tell in the interview. That's true. I haven't worked as a trucker all my life. I know that. Basically, I didn't tell you that at one time I worked in the structure of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. I know that. You worked for the FSIN, right? In the Federal Penitentiary Service. No. No? Where? Even cooler. I have worked where the number of Russian colonels and generals is off the charts. What were you doing there? Were you guarding some kind of facility? No, it's nothing like that, it's simple. I used to take groceries from the warehouse to this organization. <laughs> Everything is serious. I have another question for you, I'm interested in talking about whether or not your thoughts and views on things have changed, before the war, during the war, during captivity and after captivity? Dimitri, I want to tell you the following, I still think that the presidents of our countries really need to sit down at the negotiating table. The sooner the better, because, first of all, on your side there are big military losses, on our side there are big losses. You and we don't need this. The key question is under what conditions? We have one condition and it has not changed. It's clear. Sitting down at the negotiating table is a good start. It's hard to sit down at the negotiating table with terrorists. You are a witness to war. You don't have to say that. Wait, wait, I'll say something. Let's get straight to the point, let's go straight to the points. Tell me please, who is shelling peaceful cities and infrastructure? I don't know that for sure. Petya, yeah, either we will speak frankly and honestly, or we will not speak. Because I know that you know who's firing. I know that you have heard these explosions. Did you hear the explosions of rockets in the cities of Ukraine? I heard the explosions. When I was in Krasny Lehman, your artillerymen shelled the infrastructure very well. I'm talking about strategic missile attacks, such as X-47 M2 Dagger, or Caliber S-300. I'm talking about artillery and rocket attacks on peaceful cities that are not on the front line itself. Yes I understand. On the news they constantly say that this is the destruction of ammunition depots, the destruction of other objects, also the destruction of military equipment which is in close proximity to non-military objects and residential areas. It seems like ours say that artillery fires pointwise and everything possible is being done so that civilians of Ukraine do not suffer. 
civilian casualties are minimal. Have you been on the internet, shall we say, anywhere? What kind of news are you watching right now? Mostly now I watch TV. I turn on the TV and listen to the news in the background. What channel is on your TV right now? I can change the channel now. I don't know what channel the news is on right now. The first channel that I turn on is Russia 24. You are watching propaganda. You continue to do the same as before the war. You, excuse the expression, a sponge into which slop is poured. And you start telling this propaganda to me. Why are you starting to tell me that I'm foolish? At the moment I'm more concerned with my own personal affairs than trying to understand politics and find out what's really going on on the front. Now I am more interested in the issue of issuing the bodies of dead soldiers who are now on the battlefield. Exchange of bodies of dead Russian soldiers and Ukrainian. The exchange of your and our soldiers who are in captivity, so that they quickly return to their lady. This is my top priority. There is nothing you can do about it. Let's go back to the previous question. Look. I want to understand for myself, am I talking with some kind of changed person, or with the same person you were? If you continue to tell me the old fake stories that Russian troops are shelling peaceful cities because in this way they are shelling bases in peaceful cities and the military in peaceful cities. What can we talk about? Regarding power plants. Are there a lot of military personnel in the power plants now? No. There's not a lot of military in the power plants. Now turn up the volume on the TV. Over the past few days, about a hundred Ukrainian fighters have been admitted with a diagnosis of frostbite. The topic will be continued by Yevgeny Tishkovets. Can you hear it? A hundred fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine with frostbite, 40% required limb amputation. It seeped through the information iron curtain. And how many more froze for Ukraine? Turn off the sound. Turn off the sound on the television. Did you see the fun in that? Did you see one very interesting detail? No. There was no snow on the screen. Have you seen the weather forecast? What is the weather like outside right now? No. Do you want me to tell you a secret? It's a secret you won't like. Yes. It's minus 2 degrees now. In these temperatures and strong winds, you can get pretty bad frostbite. Why are you trying to come up with something that cannot be? Do you really believe what you were just told on TV? How did they say? Amputated the limbs of 40 soldiers? A hundred people with frostbite, not amputation. It's all a lie. This is nonsense. It's minus 2 degrees Celsius outside. At minus 2 degrees, nothing will happen to a person. Only if he goes out completely naked. Are you an adult or not? Do you believe that? In principle, yes. If you think about it logically, it's hard to get such frostbite at this temperature. And at minus 10 in the open area it is really possible to get such frostbite. Now tell me, would some idiot stand outside at 10 below 0 degrees Celsius with a limb exposed, no shoes, and no clothes on? To do that, he would have to want to get frostbite on purpose. If you think about it logically, it seems that way. Bottom line, what do they tell you on TV? Tell me something. I don't know what. Why are you afraid to name the real situation? To say that frostbite is not so critical? There are several degrees of frostbite. I can't explain it. But if a person falls asleep, he can get frostbite.
Petya, we're talking about a hundred people. A hundred people fell asleep? You know that's nonsense. In principle you are right. Why believe it? One hundred people forgot to cover up for the night and then half of them had their legs amputated? Because they didn't feel cold in their sleep? No, no one was amputated. It was just frostbite. In the news, they said that his limbs were amputated. Yeah. I didn't invent this. Okay, let's go back. To sit down at the negotiating table, I think, is the best option for ending this war. Members of the government would just get close and meet. See, they don't sit down at the negotiating table with terrorists. You are a representative of a terrorist country that destroys critical infrastructure, destroys power plants, thermal power plants and hydroelectric power plants. Dmitry, how do you see this situation from your side? We will defeat you and Russia will capitulate. This is happening successfully right now. Let's look at the situation from a geographical point of view. I once traveled all over Ukraine in just a day by car. Not even in a day, but in a few hours. And I traveled Russia from St. Petersburg to Baikal in half a month. I do not know how you will break Russia. We do not need the territory of Russia. We will break you from the inside. Why can't you understand this? You will explode from within, and instead of Russia there will be 50 republics. BPR, MPR, LPR, Leningrad People's Republic. Here's what's going to happen in the short term. Dmitry, let's resolve our dispute this way, let history judge us, because arguing about this is considered a sin. The only fact that I consider significant, because I am a person with a three-grade church school education, is that we will look at the situation in the future. I think this will be the best solution for both of us. Look, I'm interested in the question. You went to war. What were your ideas? I would really like to look from inside Ukraine at this situation, to look from your side. Great. Look, you just turned on a funny episode of the news. Did what you saw on the news coincide with what you saw in Ukraine? Look, it's not exactly a coincidence. Some are for Russia, and some are against Russia in these disputed territories. Here's the thing. What are the disputed territories? There are no disputed territories. There is the territory of Ukraine, there are you, who came in the 14th year and attacked Ukraine. God. We didn't attack in 2014. You attacked in the year 2014. You entered the Ukraine. There was no special operation in 2014. Now I'll tell you when it was announced. It was announced in the spring of 2022. The special operation was announced on the 24th of February, 22nd year. 11 months ago. And in the 14th year you took Crimea and entered the Donetsk and Lugansk regions. The invaders had such odious surnames, Strelkov, Motorola, Pushilin. As far as I understand, they are natives of Russia, they are native Russians. Indigenous Russians. Indigenous Russians. Strelkov, aka Gherkin, is an FSB colonel. I had no interest in these people at all. Because they don't tell you that. Because it's an uncomfortable truth. You are told about a hundred frostbitten soldiers outside in minus two. You know, there is news that I don't pay attention to, and there is news that really hurts me. There is one news that touched me. The news about the fact that the monument to Alexander Matrasov, 
your compatriot, you completely demolished. What do you care about what kind of monuments we demolish and what we do at home? Why is it important to you? In Russia there are cities without heating. Shouldn't we talk about it? You show how some monument was demolished here in Ukraine. What do you care about our monuments? That's not what I'm talking about. It's the news that exclusively hooked me. What do you care about the monument? A monument is a memory. Let's come here again because of the demolition of the monument. Let's get back to your expectations. You wanted to see for yourself. Have you seen the Nazis in Ukraine? I didn't. None of the 500 people we talked to saw it. Did you see any infringement of the Russian language? Why no one? There was one man, Pasha, he was a mercenary. They talked to him through an interpreter, if I'm not mistaken. And what? These are volunteers who have arrived and are fighting under a contract on the side of the armed forces of Ukraine. We can officially do it. You can officially come to fight, sign a contract with the armed forces and receive a salary. Wagner Group it's the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. Wagner Group, it's prisoners. I hope you are not serious. Not only are there inmates in Wagner Group, there are different people in Wagner Group. In Russia mercenarism is officially forbidden. According to the law, it shouldn't be. In your country, mercenarism is punishable by the criminal code. To release imprisoned murderers and send them to another country is unthinkable. We have a different situation. We officially have a contest and a procedure. Anyone can come to sign up, go through all the procedures and checks, and then fight on our side. Do you feel the difference? We are talking about the fact that you came to Ukraine to see if reality coincides with what is shown on TV. You haven't seen Nazis, you've seen people who don't speak Russian and Ukrainian. There are such people, so what? We have it official and legal. What else? Everything is clear here. What else surprised you? All the soldiers I saw there, all the military men, they all come from Ukraine. Well, what's wrong with that? They're all idea guys, fighting for their country. And what's wrong with that? That makes sense, yes. What's wrong here? Now we are only talking about the Ukrainian side. But there are also Ukrainian guys fighting for the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. Yes, there are no such Ukrainians, they were driven like cattle to war. We talked about this. I'm also talking about native Ukrainians from different regions. There were people from Luhansk and Donetsk in the war with you. How badly did they want to fight? They were caught on the streets, given machine guns and told to go and die for Russia. I understand they were drafted into the army. And you have a draft in the army. Our mobilization is the same as the draft. Yes. Moving on. Let's not hide the fact that you also have mobilization going on. You're mobilizing guys to the front, too. Well, yes it is. What's wrong with that? There is a war on our territory, we were attacked. Petya. Do you feel the difference between mobilization for defense and mobilization for attack? Do you feel any difference between these concepts? You've been mobilized and sent to attack for ideas you don't know. You don't know what you were doing. Give me at least one argument in favor of the fact that your TV shows true events. I don't even know what to say. What exactly should I say? What was confirmed from what the propaganda told you? Coming to Ukraine, what did you see? I saw destroyed cities. Was this on TV? 
We have it on every day. Yes. Who ruined it? <sighs> we have too honest a country. I still have my doubts. I'm not going to go to Ukraine a second time. <clears throat> what are you doubting about? About who destroyed the cities? Yes. Do you doubt who destroyed Mariupol and Bakhmut? Dmitry, I want to tell you that war has no face. No one, neither you nor I, will know the whole truth. A lot of people don't know the truth, I think about 90% of people don't know how it really was. Why are you talking about what you don't know? No. I'll just tell you about the fact that I talked with a guy who was also a prisoner. When we were exchanged on the bus. He told me the following story. About how one guy took and literally saved a Ukrainian soldier and then was taken prisoner. This guy was a doctor. And one day a man in a balaclava came to him in the detention center. He could not see his face. He brings a bag of candy. And the Ukrainian soldier tells him, thank you friend, you know. That's the story. Frankly speaking, it makes no sense for me to get involved in big politics. And I'm not that old anymore. I am in favor of being in peace, even in this kind of peace, rather than quarreling. Hey yeah, we're going nowhere. Peter, can you hear me? Peter? This conversation can go on for another 10 or 20 hours and we will get nowhere. I have two simple specific questions for you. Uh, what did you see in Ukraine from what you were shown on TV? What has been confirmed? This is the first question. And the second question? Let's do the first one first. I will answer the second question right away. I can't do the first one right now. I see that there is destruction of the house, civilians are suffering. I will help you with the answer. Until the 24th, the city of Mariupol existed. You can go to our channel, are you subscribed to it? Mm. On the platform YouTube. Go and watch the video of February 20th about Mariupol. I'm not on YouTube. I will go to YouTube and watch the video, though. Take a look. There's a video of Vladimir Zelensky walking through peaceful Mariupol on February 20th. The clean, beautiful city of Mariupol, not bombed out. And on the 24th of February, an event occurs, and you destroy this city. I think we haven't moved forward. You haven't changed anything. You still haven't figured it out. Perhaps it is a lack of analytical composition of mind, perhaps a lack of knowledge. Yes, I'm not very smart. Perhaps a lack of basic knowledge, a lack of historical knowledge, a lack of information, and the presence of your television where you are propagandized with complete nonsense. From a historical point of view, Ukraine officially became a republic in 1917. In my opinion, if I am not mistaken. Historically, when Ukraine came into being, you had nothing. Kiev is older than Moscow, do you know that? That's right. That's all. It is difficult to have a conversation with a person who lacks basic information. You believe what you are told on the news, but when we start to deal with trivial and logical things, you agree, well, yes, if you think about it, at minus two a hundred people could not get frostbite. You are being deceived. How many people like you heard the news that there were a hundred Ukrainian soldiers who received frostbite and amputations? Half of Russia heard it and believed it. But it was minus two degrees, Petya. It was zero during the day. This is life, here you need to think logically. That's the temperature in Kiev, but we're talking about a different region. If you look at other regions, in Kherson it's plus 5, or plus 8. 
No, it's not about Kherson. It's somewhere in the Lugansk region. I report to you that there is no such temperature in Luhansk. Lugansk is lower than Kiev, to the south, and it is warmer there. The video even showed that there is no snow there. There is no snow there. I saw through the camera of the phone that they did not show snow there, but showed grass. And they tell you that a lot of people got frostbite and you believe it. And when we started to figure it out, we began to realize that it doesn't happen that way. It's impossible to get frostbite at this temperature. Unless you deliberately go out naked and stand in the wind. I'll be honest, I had frostbite on my toes at minus 5 degrees. Even though I was warmly dressed, I had frostbite on my toes. I want to say that I was very warmly dressed, but I still got frostbite on my fingers. I suggest we end this conversation. With your permission, I will make a summary of this video for a logical conclusion. Come on. Summing up. You, Petya, have been to Ukraine to see if everything here is as it is shown on TV. Right? As it turned out, there are no Nazis here. Right? Yes? It turned out that there are people on our side who do not speak Russian and Ukrainian. Mercenaries, yes. They are not mercenaries, they are volunteers. Volunteers, yes. Different concepts. Volunteers are people from another country who volunteered to fight for one side of the conflict. Yes, no one forced them, unlike Wagner Group and your mercenaries. You saw that a full-fledged war is going on in Ukraine. At the same time, we clearly figured out that until the 24th of our cities were intact. And from the 24th of February, when Russia came for some reason, they all began to turn into ruins. Right? Right. Then you were taken prisoner, where you were tortured, not allowed to eat. It turned out that on your own initiative you decided to transfer money to Ukraine to thank the medic who was helping your soldiers. There's no need to mix the public with the personal here. Because I like the nurse as a person. I have no questions. You felt so bad in captivity that you decided to thank a soldier of a foreign army. Now, you have come under the exchange of prisoners, and you still have not figured out and cannot figure out what is happening here. I really feel sorry for you as a person. No, Dimitri, for now I will only observe this conflict while I watch. I really feel sorry for you as a person. Because at your age you cannot put two and two together and give unequivocal answers to the events that are taking place. I really feel sorry for you. Maybe it's a lack of knowledge, maybe it's a lack of education. It is convenient for your ruler to have citizens who cannot put two and two together and who believe what they are told on TV. It's very convenient. It is easy for these people to say, go die and they go and die. I really feel sorry for you. It's too late for you. You will not be able to solve the rebus called, 2022nd year to 2023rd year, and who attacked whom. <sighs> I said it all. I thought it would be much more interesting. I even wanted to do a clip of the moments from the previous interview, but I'm not going to do that. Because I don't see the point. Okay, then, goodbye. I have to go now. All the best. Yes, goodbye. Goodbye.